hello, welcome to lesson 6.4. And we're in this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to set up uh, for a test on the population proportion. We're going to be talking about the notion of what's called a null and an alternate or alternative hypothesis and how we would set those up. All right. And we're also going to mention and talk about how the testing um, conditions would be necessary. So let's take a look at what we're talking about. Our essential knowledge uh, revolves around this idea of a null and a hy alternate hypothesis. A null hypothesis is what we assume to be correct unless the evidence suggests it's otherwise. So we're going to begin with um, a, a statement, and it's going to be mathematically related. We'll figure that out in a minute. And we'll say this is what we believe to be true unless we get something that happens so unusually, and then again, that's where we've been kind of talking all along. If something so unusual happens that we have to reject that, then we're left with no, no other conclusion but to accept its alternative, all right? Um, and this is the, you might be very familiar, it's very similar to the idea of innocent until proven guilty. When somebody walks in, into a courtroom and they're being um, charged with a crime, the jury is supposed to assume that they are innocent until there is enough evidence otherwise to prove them guilty. And that's kind of the idea. Um, the job is to try to disprove that null if we can, or to come up with evidence against the null if we can. Um, the hypotheses will be written in terms of equalities or inequalities, um, and we have to cover all of the options, and they need to be what's called mutually exclusive. They have to cover all the options. So X could be, you know, the proportion could be greater than 50% or less than or equal to 50%. It can't be like, oh, it can't overlap, all right? We'll talk about that when we get to some examples. Um, the null hypothesis is a statement of um, equality, of, of no difference, and then the alternative is that there's, there's a difference. So we'll talk more about that too. Um, but yeah, I guess I kind of jumped the gun on that. The uh, null is saying there's really essentially no difference between the means or proportions. We've been looking at proportions, but we could be doing this with measurements and means, but there's no difference from the proportion um, that we're sampling and the pro proportion of the whole population. So we're going to be trying to estimate, uh, say, maybe 50% of people are registered voters. We're going to make a guess and then we're going to try, we're going to assume that and then go out there and take a sample and see if that sample is significantly different. If it is, then we reject that null and go to the alternate. And I know this is a little confusing at first, but it will make sense when we see some examples. And we're going to be spending a lot of time on this. This is a big idea in this course, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume the null is true. And then we're going to do some kind of experiment or some gathering of data. And if we have enough evidence to, to say we are suspicious of the null, then we're going to reject it and we are left with the alternative. And we've essentially been doing that over and over throughout the whole course. All right. Um, then you make a decision and your options are you either reject the null or you fail to reject the null. You never, that's it. You have two choices. This is, this is a 50-50, this is like true-false. Either reject the null or you fail to reject the null. You say nothing except those two things that are there in bold in that fourth bullet. You agree, you know, either one of the two. You can not say any, uh, don't change the wording on any of that, all right? Um, so we're gonna use the mathematical symbols. Null hypothesis will be represented with H sub O. This is the null and A is the alternative. or the alternate, uh, H sub A. I don't know why it's it not, I mean, I guess null means zero or nothing. So null means no difference. So if you think about zero difference, uh, that's why H sub zero makes sense. So what we're gonna have is something like P hat, or P is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, that would be uh, an example. Um, and then the alternative would be that P is not equal to 0 0.5. All right, that's kind of what we're talking about. We're gonna have an option, we're gonna have two options. You're gonna have this or that, and they can't overlap. Either it's either 50% or it's not 50%. Um, and if we were to do it here, it'd be like P is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. The alternative would be P is less than 0 0.5. Those two statements don't overlap. They can't share an end, even an endpoint. They have to be op completely disjoint and they have to cover all the bases, okay? Um, and likewise with the 
uh, less than last one less than or equal to. So let's look at a couple examples. Um, so if we have the null hypothesis in this first example that no more than 30% of the registered voters in Santa Clara voted in the primary election, our null statement would be that no more, so we're, we're here no more than 30, that's good. We're gonna have to rewrite this. That would be that the proportion is less than 30%. Or you might, if you're using the decimal, you could use less than or equal to uh, 0 0.3. Okay, depending on whether you're using the decimal or the percentage, that's fine. I'm just using the 30% here. Uh, its complement would be that P is greater than. And notice this one is less than or equal to, this one is greater than. There is no overlap. They can't have any overlap, but they, and they must cover all the bases, okay? So um, the one below it is about school standards um, in Germany, France, and Israel about how many students take the AP exam and pass, um, that 6.6% 6, 6 .6 of US students take the advanced placement exam and 4.4% pass. Um, and then is that more or less um, in other countries? So what we're gonna do is take it and the alternative is less than or equal to 0 0.066. And then the alternate would be greater than 0 0.066. So let's try building one of these. All right, so we have a medical trial and we wanted to decide whether or not the medicine reduces the cholesterol by 25%. Um, so we wanna 25% or 0.25, depending on which way you wanna write it, is our, this is our, I don't know, for lack of better hope, um, I think I spelled that threshold. Um, that's our dividing line, okay? And what we wanna do is statement of no difference is that the P is equal to 0.25 or less than. So let me go ahead and show you. We would have the null hypothesis being that it's less than or equal to 25%. And in this case, going over 25% would be a good thing. So what we wanna do is we actually are, ultimately what you're gonna end up doing is putting the thing that you would you think is happening or that you would like to have happen be the alternate and so that you're going to do the experiment so that if your experiment shows gives you evidence to reject the null you're left with no conclusion but to accept what you wanted to show what you're trying to show so for the medical company showing that their um, drug reduced cholesterol by 25 percent or greater than 25 percent is a good thing all right so and um, P, you do have to define your variable. P is the proportion of medicine uh, reduce, reduction in cholesterol. So, all right, let's try one about driving test. On a driver's test, about 40% of the test pass on the first try. I want to test to make sure. So if I am the state, I want to make sure that I'm putting out qualified drivers and I don't want to pass. I'd like to keep, actually, maybe this sounds terrible, but if you think about it from a safety perspective, you want to only put out qualified drivers. So you want the test to be about a 40% success rate. You don't want 80% of them pass, people passing it because it's too easy. And then you have unqualified drivers. So you, um, we actually make our null hypothesis in this case, greater P is greater than 0.4. And then P being less than 0.4 would be that we have a sufficiently challenging test. Okay, now again, I don't wanna be ugly about this, but it's true, I mean, from a safety perspective, we can't just be throwing anybody out on the road. Uh, we wanna make sure that it's a rigorous test, okay? And we, again, you wanna have your two, your two statements, you wanna have them be exclusive, and you wanna make sure you're defining it in context. Hey, I think I've said that before. I feel like I've said that. All right, um, so what about Skittles? And um, so they, they might claim that there are 21.6% of orange Skittles in a bag. And we're not sure whether having more Skittles or less is a bad thing. I don't know. I mean, you might, you know, I don't know. People claim that they can taste the difference in Skittles. Um, I know my wife had a good time doing an experiment and actually making fun of uh, Kedron, Jen, uh, Miss Young's daughter, about 
her tasting Skittles blindfolded and apparently she couldn't do it. Um, but anyway, we don't know if above, above or below is a good or a bad thing in this case. So we say the proportion of Skittles is equal. There is no difference. There's always one of the equality part. So if you're gonna do less than or equal to or greater than or equal to or just equal to, that's the null. And then the alternate is in this case, I don't know, we might have more than 21.6, we might have less. I don't know which way it might go. So it's either it is or it ain't. And it's either exactly 21.6% or it's not 21.6, where P is the proportion of worn Skittles in the bag. All right, so always got to define your variables, always got to have your statements overlap, not overlapping. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to learn in coming lessons about a one, what's called a one sample Z test on how to then test these statements. All right, we have the null not alternate. We want to make sure we get those data. That's all this lesson was about is <clears throat> establishing what the null and the alternate were. And then in the coming sections, we'll learn how to do that test that we talked about. Um, you're going to be doing it for a single categorical variable when you're doing a one sample Z test. Um, so if you're testing one thing against the percentage or proportion, it's this new one sample Z test, which we'll be learning. Um, and then you always do, this is huge. Um, we did this in the last one, we're not worried. You wanna check for independence and normal, all right? The problem will often say it's normal, but that's where we might have, um, we wanna have at least 10, in, 10 successes and 10 failures. Um, we don't want to go more than 10%. And the problem should say this, that there's, or allude to the fact that there's been some randomization. Okay. So that takes care of 6.4. There's a, there'll be an assignment in Khan about writing null and alternative hypotheses. I hope that you're having a great day.